and welcome back to NixTube. Today we're going to be doing a vector illustration. Um, Graphic Design 1 students have just finished the cartoon version of themselves and now your task is to create another cartoon character um, of your choice, right? And so the, for this task you need to trace at least two items. So I found this fantastic image of the squirrel and a little turntable and so we're going to be doing uh, DJ Nutty Buddy, right? That's going to be, that'll be his name. So the first thing I did is I took these two images from the internet and I placed them into Illustrator. I placed them in Illustrator and then what I did is I locked the layer that they were in. So if you go to find your layers panel, um, if it's not out, you can go layer, uh, window layers, find that layers panel. And then because those two images are in that layer, see eyeball on and off, here they go, here, now you see them, now you don't. They are locked and I can draw on top of them. And I already have my actual drawing of my squirrel here, um, DJing, but um, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate how I, how I did that, or at least the squirrel part of it. So um, I'm going to zoom in on the squirrel here, and I'm on a new layer. I created a new layer called Draw. I'm actually going to create another layer because this will be my Draw 2, right, the, the 2, Draw 2 there. And I'm going to trace out this squirrel. So the tool, that's, the tool that I would like for you to use would be the pen tool. And I'm going to show you the quick and easy way to use the pen tool. So if you notice what I'm doing is I'm not doing any curves right now, right? Curves are going to come in a second. Um, his tail ends there, so I'm going to have to make up that information there. So I'm just kind of doing like his whole body here. Um, I could get more specific, right? If I wanted to zoom in really close, um, I kind of got in here and I can get more specific. I could show his little nails. I'm not doing any curves right now either, actually. Um, I know that the curve is, is more difficult. I'm, I'm just kind of click, click to do the straight line, click and drag to do a curve, right? So click and drag to do a curve. Um, if you want to go ahead and do the curves, I'm kind of ignoring his little nails in there. I might want to put, put those back in later. Um, I can't see what's happening here, so I'm going to jog over here to my tools and do no fill so I can see the edge there, and I'm going to do, you know, I'm still doing the curve here to kind of trace that out. He's hairy. I'm going to ignore the hair for now. I'm, look, I just skipped that whole spot. I'm going to show you a great tool that allows you to got these little pads here. I'm going to ignore those as well. Um, I, do, I do want to differentiate or separate his arm, but I'm going to do that in a, in a second here in a, in a different format. So let me continue to go here. Ooh, this is where I get a little more complicated with the nails, right? So I'm click drag. So, but again, what I could do is this. There is a great tool here that I want to show you. I'm kind of looking for points, corners, things like that. Right. Click, again, click drag if you want the straight line. Oops. If you don't want your next line to go with that curve, you're going to stop it in the center, and then you can keep going and we'll go back to where I started. Okay. Now, I, I did that. That was a very generic kind of quick trace of that animal. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab that curvature pen tool, and I want to bump out all of these shapes. Now, I am tracing it from a photograph, yes, but at the end of the day, it's my drawing of a squirrel. So if I wanted to make it look a little bit more silly or different, I could definitely do that. That's my prerogative, right? Uh, let me go and play with that. And Oh, it should not be taking so long to fix that little spot right there. There we go. That ear is going to be a little bit thinner. There we go. Bump this out here. Um, I'm using the space bar. The space bar turns my cursor into a hand tool, and then that way I can kind of move around the image like this. So every time I go to click and I pull out, I am creating a new point. I can move the points. I can add points, right? I want the tail to be kind of bushy, so let's do this. It's going to end off his tail there. So I've got this here, got this here. Let me move that over there a little bit and pull that out there. Um, his foot, his foot, his foot. Uh, you know what? His foot's okay to me right now for demonstration's sake. He needs a belly, so let's pull that out there. Give him quite a belly. Um, we come out a bump there for his hand. And then I did a lot of little intricate things here, but there's a few spots that I want to go in and fix. So I'm going to pull that out, pull that out, pull that out. Pull that out, pull this out. He's got a nose, and we're back to where we started. Actually, I want, I really want to fix this here. It's really bothering me. There we go. There we go. Now I fixed the ear. There we go. Okay. All right, now the squirrel's all one shape. Now, when I go to turn him into an illustration, I'm going to want to break him up. So one way that I can break them up is using the knife tool. Now, I, I've got his shape selected. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the knife tool, and it's under here under the eraser tool. The trick to the knife tool is I want to cut this shape, these shapes all up. So I have my knife tool. I have to make sure that this is selected, right? 
make sure that my shape there is selected or not. Oh yeah, it is selected, which is really big. And I'm grabbing that knife tool and I want to cut. Now the trick to cutting with this knife tool, right, is to make sure that you go and you, you begin outside the line, meaning the path, and you end outside the line. So that would be his head. I just cut off his head. Um, if I went to go click on this separately now, I should be going in and, and selecting his head as a separate entity or a separate piece. See, now his head is a separate piece. Okay, let me go back. Let me finish off um, the body, right? So let me take that knife tool again, and I want to cut off now this finger. Try this hand, and I want to bring it all the way up and all the way up, and I want to kind of combine it and pull it out over there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that line in a minute. I also want to slice this right here so I can cut this arm off. Now that arm is cut. Um, his feet, I want to cut his feet off. There we go. Cut his feet off, and I could cut his tail off as well, especially if I wanted to have some fun with that. Okay, so in theory right now, uh, one, one last cut I want to make, one last cut I want to make. Let me go back to his head. I want to cut that little ear off right there. and Go right in between and out. So if I go in now, I should be able to select these little things individually. And I'm actually going to take all of these shapes, right, and I'm going to move them off of the photograph because so that I can see the colors a little bit better and I'm going to be adding some color onto this as well. Let's move them right about there. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add color. So let's say, let's get, I, I want to, you know, get a good brown going. So I'm going to go click on his belly here and I want to add a color. So a few things I could do. I could take the eyedropper tool and I could say, I want to make that brown, right? And it could be a solid color. I mean, this could be a, a flat illustration if you'd like for it to be. Notice how as I click around, I'm picking up other colors to put on there. Or you can get fancy and you can make this into a gradient if you'd like. So I'm going to keep on clicking because... Um, I, I could get some different colors here, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I want to make a gradient, right? I want to make a gradient here. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to actually go to my properties panel here and I'm going to click on this shape and I want to grab that gradient tool. When I grab that gradient tool, it activates the gradient section of my properties panel. And I'm actually going to click on these little lines right here to bring up this dialog box. So if you notice, I just put the black and white gradient on there. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here pick up my eyedropper, and then pick up a color on the squirrel himself. So now I've got brown. Again, let me go back in there. I'm going to pick up the eyedropper, pick up a color, and pick up a color that might be on the squirrel himself. So we've got like a white belly and a brown back. So that might work. But it's in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take that gradient tool, and I want to rotate this gradient. So you see I'm taking my cursor out. I can move these guys around. I can change. This is a blender, right? You know, how, how ooh, that's kind of nice. How close or far um, this guy will rotate it around. See, I'm kind of rotating it around. We pull it back up into place, maybe something like that. I do want to bring that white into there. Kind of show his little belly there. Um, the other thing I could do is I could switch it. Right now it's a linear gradient. I could switch it to a radial gradient, and maybe that would make it. Oh, no, I don't want to go there. Let's just go back to that. I could also take that gradient tool and just click and drag right in my image. That's another way that I can go drop that in there. So let's bring that white down. And actually, ooh, that, that, looks, that looks pretty good right there. Sometimes it takes some shenagling, right? Shenagling to get it to look right. All right, so let's click on this guy. I want this guy to be eyedropper, the same color as that. But I'm going to go in there and kind of differentiate and fix that up a little bit. I want it to be darker. So I'm going to pull it down and let that be like kind of like the darker angle of that area, right? And maybe I'll put it on an angle a little bit like that as well. All right, uh, how about his little feeties? We'll get his little feeties in there. Uh, again, eyedropper. Let's get that color out there. Let's pull that brown. Um, I could actually, like, gradient tool. Let me just get out of the way there. There we go. Maybe it come this way. There we go. And kind of line, line that up. That's going to be a little bit darker, a little bit less detail. That's okay. For right now, for demonstration, let me grab his arm. Again, let me give it that color. Oop, my bad. Give it that color. Yep, that would be the difference. Um, let me stick that in there. Let me kind of rotate this guy around. Oh, there we go. Rotate that around to get that nice dark arm. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to click on this guy, and I'm going to put that same kind of color in there. But I want this the lighter there. And then I'm going to switch that around as well. So let me pull that around like that and pull that up in there because that's he's definitely got a lot of white there in his hand right um his you know what and i, I might say you know what i gotta go in there and i gotta pull that arm out a little bit right kind of differentiate that and i could do that and last part it would be his head and i'm gonna go in again give it a color give it that color 
flip those colors around or something like that and then he's got his ear which is the last part and a color for that as well oh. There we go. And there's my little squirrel. Now there might be some areas that you want to go and clean up, but that's the basis of the beginning of the drawing. Now this squirrel has some strokes on him, right? He's got some black strokes that you can see and some you can't. So I'm going to go and turn those all off, actually, for the time being. Um, I don't want the strokes on there, um, and that's going to kind of clean them up a little bit. But I can go in there now. If I want this, obviously the arm and the hand, head don't match. So I can go in there and modify it so that there isn't that little gappy there because I don't want that gap there when I bring them over into um, my document there. So at this point, I could go in and I can add some details. Oh, boy. Come on, baby. Let's do it. Move it over. Move it. Move it. There we go. There we go. Um, right now, the bat's in front of that. That's okay. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Demonstration sake, because actually I got a whole finished little squirrely guy right there. And he's got some details and some other color things going on. Um, also with this guy, I put a stroke on him. So what I did here is I selected the whole squirrel, or oops, oops, I just just write his, ah, that's a different tutorial completely. Let me go select that whole squirrel. Let's say I did want to put a stroke on him, because in, in the illustration world, you kind of want to have a signature look to it. So I just put a black stroke on there. It could be whatever color. Maybe I want to even go with a dark brown. Actually, that's kind of a neat idea. Let's see what that looks like. So now it's dark brown instead of black. And then I want to go in and I want to do something fun with brushes, right? Give it a cool brush stroke because that's what Illustrator does. Their brushes are not like Photoshop's brushes. These brushes are going to give me maybe like a texture on it. So by clicking on that brush, I can go in and affect the stroke that's up there, make it thinner or thicker. And like most other things, there is a whole library of brushes. These are artistic. The, the, I love these. These are great. The chalk, the charcoal, and the pencil brushes. And you can apply different strokes onto there. And, it, and be, you know, depending on how thick or thin you want it to be, it kind of could give your, your whole project a feel, a whole project a feel or effect. And it helps if the entire project, the background and everything, also always has that kind of cool stroke on there. So let me go back to my squirrel. Um, I'm going to go back to this squirrel here. So what I did is I have he, I have a whole drawn, that was my new layer, this was my drawn layer. And he's all on one piece right here, my draw one. And if you notice, I took this, this kind of turntable. I took some elements of the turntable. If I zoomed in really close, you could see that I've got kind of like different strokes on there. And it kind of made it look like I got some different pieces with the the arms that would play the music, some different effects and, and added additions. And then, so that it made sense, I added a bottom part to it so that it kind of lined up with the bottom of his body. All right, so requirements for this project are that you're creating a, a short narrative. You're creating a short narrative or an idea for a cartoon or a comic strip or a, a series, something along those lines. So as I have right now, between the squirrel and the turntable, I've got a pretty good little narrative going, right? He's a squirrel. He plays music. Um, maybe he lives in the woods. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working in a background. I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to double click there. And I'm going to call it background. And I want to slide this layer behind the squirrel. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to lock this layer the squirrels in. The other thing I could do is I grab the whole thing and I can object lock the selection I could lock the selection and then it won't move right that or and I can object group I could group it too and then kind of move it off to the side um, actually before I do that though I'm gonna go back to the squirrel really quick remember that puppet warp tool we played around with um, here's my puppet warp tool at work right so I can if I wanted to right if I couldn't find a picture of a squirrel like this, like I like I did, now there's different layers here, there, and in front of and in back of other layers. But um, if I didn't find the perfect picture of the squirrel that I wanted to make him do what I was going to have him do, I could kind of make him do this stuff by kind of moving some of these items in there. Um, an even better one would probably be this hand right here because when I go to do the puppet warp, then he's like scratch, scratching on the record, scratch, scratch, scratch. <laughs> It's fun. Okay. So back to um, Puppet Warp. You could change it. It doesn't have to look just like that. Okay. So let me turn. I'm going to lock this layer, right? I'm going to lock it. Um, that's my second drum. I'll just lock that one too. And I'm going to go into the background. So to create your background, I'm going to create a super simple background here because I've already done my two traces and I just put a, a, a color back there. One of the other requirements of this project is that you use a gradient. I'm going to go over to my swatches panel. Now, if you don't see any colors in here or if you can't find the swatches panel, it looks like a grid. Go to the window menu. All of these things that I'm pulling out are going to be in here. Here's my swatches right there. 
So I'm going to go into my swatches. I'm going to go to the library because that's where all the good stuff is at the library. Going to go down to gradients and I'm going to choose. Oh, look, there's one for sky. So I'm going to pick some sky gradients and I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in there. I can make it look like a. Oh, ooh, look at this. I changed my fill. I'm sorry. I changed my stroke and not my fill. I get rid of the stroke for right now. There we go. Um, and I can make it look like sunset. I can experiment with different color effects that I want to put in there or that come up in that gradient. I'm going to take my gradient tool and I'm going to change the direction. And then I'm going to create another shape here, right? And I don't want sky gradients. I want some green gradients. And if I go into gradients and I choose um, foliage is the term for the greens, the green, the grasses, and I can put the grasses in there. So now it kind of looks like he's outside scratch, scratching on his, uh, his turntable there, right? So there, there's your first requirement or second requirement, two items traced, a gradient in the background. Something else that I want you to add or include to see and experiment with are symbols. So if you go to the window menu and you go and you grab out your symbols, symbols are like little, I don't know, stickers that you can just place right there into your piece. Now, when you first open it, you're only going to get this first row. And every time you add them, you're going to get more. So if I go to the library, because there's another library here, and I go down to nature, because that's what I have an outdoor scene, you'll see that there's a lot of cool symbols that I can use. So here's a fun cloud. Oh, let me switch, let me switch my tool so I can make it bigger. Here's a fun cloud. Um, here's another fun cloud. These are, I mean, and these are editable, um, but I don't have to edit them now if I don't want to. Um, if I wanted to edit the symbol, right, I could have it go off because that's not going to print the part that goes off. If I wanted to edit the symbol, I could break the link to the symbol, and now it's completely editable. You see, there's like a little gradient right here. So let's say I wanted to make it, I don't know, a stormy, more of a stormy cloud. Let me go grab that properties. Let me see what that gradient looks like, right? Here's that here's that gradient. Maybe I want this color to be, I don't know, like a darker gray, like it's about to rain or something. I don't know. It's kind of dark. That's something that you could do. They're completely editable, any of those symbols. So if I wanted to put like a little tree in there, here's a little tree. Now the reason why this is just going behind him and I don't have to worry about it or move it is because of those layers, right? This entire layer, background layer, is behind the dude, right? So um, dude is in there. Where is he? Oh, boy. Should be one of those. I don't know why he's not going away. Um, but it's like now you see it. Now you Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. It's late. It's late. There you go. Um, I could turn them on and off, right? So I'm still working in the background, but it's nice that I, everything that I put goes back there. So gradients, symbols, two items traced. Last thing is a title. What, what is this little cartoon about, right? My little cartoon is about this DJ squirrel. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to type DJ squirrel. Let's just I don't know, keep it easy. DJ squirrel, right? Now, in terms of type in Illustrator, right, you have to hold shift when you change the size of the type. I'm holding shift. I'm clicking and dragging so that I don't take the text and make it unconstrained so it doesn't get fat, right? Here, here's me not holding shift, right? What this does is it, it completely changes the way the integrity of the font. It completely changes the integrity of the font. So either hold shift or let me go back, 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 back. Here I am to the beginning. Go to your character menu. I'm sorry, character panel. And you can change the size of the text in here as well. This, this you know is going to be constrained. And I can go and pop a number in there if I want to. Um, I can even go to my prop. There's my properties panel. And I can go in here and, and kind of pick up, you know, 200 and, and type it in there as well. So I could do that. Um, let's go 125. I think that looks good. Yeah, okay. Um, this is the default font. Do not use the default font. To see other fonts that you've downloaded, um, you can click on the name of the font and scroll through. Ooh, isn't that a good one? Okay, like it, leaving it to, to see other fonts that you've that you've put in there. Now, clearly, I've downloaded this font, or maybe it's an Adobe font that's already in there. But that's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Okay, the last thing that I want you to add or include is a graphic style. If you go to the window menu, take out your graphic styles. In Photoshop, we used graphic styles to add effects. And graphic styles in Illustrator do very much the same thing. If I go down to the library and I go down to type effects or any of the other ones, you can experiment with any of the other ones. I don't know why Illustrator does this, but it has these like auxiliary panels, right? So see how you can combine these together so that you don't have like a, a gobbly gook of panels over here, right? If I can, I can, I can combine these together. Now those two, if I click on it, are going to be out together. Um, kind of collapse them in there a little bit. 
All right, every time you click on one, it adds it to the main panel, right? So if I click on it, it'll add it to the main panel. So let's say you saw one that you really liked. Ooh, that's fun. But like the colors are a little bit off. Like what if I, I, I like this, but I want green like that's down here, that green. How do I, how do I change that type of, it's just like the layer styles in Photoshop. You can find it, move it. All right, I'm gonna go to my properties panel. Here it is, effects. It tells me what is creating that. Um, and it'll bring up what's called the appearances panel. So if I go into the appearances panel, now I can see, okay, so I like that, but I want it to be that darker green because I want it to kind of go with the green that I have in the grass down there. And maybe I like this pink, but I want to go like a little bit darker with it. So you've got some options in there that you can go change and experiment with. You don't have to use it just the way it is, but what it essentially will do for you is it create, I need. Mean, I'm shrinking this, it's a little bit off the page. Um, essentially what it does is it creates a title logo in some sense, right? It's kind of, it has its own look and feel to it. And um, at that point I've hit all the requirements of the project and, and you are ready to print it and turn it in. When you're printing Illustrator, let me just do that really quick. File, print. I'm going to print this piece. It's landscape and it's going to show me on, on the side. That's fine. That's how it should be. Um, but if you notice, it's going outside of the printable area. That's what that little little lines are. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click fit to page because then I make sure, and I'm actually going to slide it right up there. And then I'm going to make sure that the part that I want is going to be printed and then you can go ahead and hit print. Make sure you are choosing, uh, yours will say color on it, the color printer when you go to print. Okay, thanks for watching.